Phoenix Suns coming into town, the hottest team in the league. 14 straight wins. Knicks trying to cool them off, CK. But this Phoenix Suns team, man, the Western Conference champs, just had it cooking all night long. Led by that man, Devin Booker. When, when, it, when a team like this just has it going like that, you, you just got to tip your cap. And from what I saw from them offensively, I mean, look at the stat sheet. 28 assists for the Suns, 13 for the Knicks. You look at the eye test, they were running rough shot all over them. Whether it was in the pick and roll with CP3 or their dribble drives, Knicks had no end. They were no way near these guys. Uh, on the on the perimeter sun shoot over 55 percent from the field over 46 percent from three not even a big time three-point shooting team but that's how on point their offense was transition 17 fast break points to 10 Knicks once again asleep at the wheel in transition you you had plays where you know Macau Bridges is is, is going one on two with, with with Julius and Fournier back there at least past both of them for yep. a layup embarrassing that part is embarrassing but for the most part the, the Suns team was just just cooking offensively for the Knicks I just felt like we we just didn't have enough ball movement going we couldn't get enough playmaking it was a lot of one pass one shot not getting into the teeth of the defense like the Suns were doing to us and, and settling for a lot of a lot of tough shots man give credit to Suns defense it is a top defense in the league they're a very good defending team very poised and, and very um, well coached. Very disciplined is the word I'm looking for. Mm. So a team like that, you got to make them work. You got to get mm -hmm. out in transition. Couldn't do that tonight, man. He let those starters stay out there for quite a long time. I yeah, know they facts. didn't have a they don't have a back to back, but still, uh, it was pretty funny. But yeah, everything you said, man, echoing everything you said because uh, the the big part uh, of everything you just mentioned was the fact that we're just not in their league, and especially seeing these up and down games that we've had these last few, uh, yeah, the last few weeks. Um, you could tell going into this when they're the hottest team in the league and we're still trying to figure out who we are, um, that, that what ended up happening was going to happen. Uh, we, 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 as fans, we talk about um, being excited about this bench and, uh, you know, our bench supposedly one of the best in the East and whatnot, but looking at that, that team over there, that entire bench, even the, um, the, the, the players that played the, the garbage time yeah. minutes, they, they all produce. Uh, they got a yeah. bench too. You know? They got a, a a very good bench. Everybody on that team in the plus minus. You know, uh, in the plus uh, over there on that side. And um, yeah, and, and to to the point with Julius Randle as well. You know, you, you talked about him looking to um, get with others involved, which is you know well and good. But in the game where you know um, this is one of the top teams in the league uh, as that you know high paid man, the all star and stuff like that. You expect to see him shoot a little bit more than eight, eight shots. You know what I mean? Uh, 32 minutes, uh, only taking eight shots. He did. He was doing an okay job in that first half, moving the ball around. But it was a little weird and a little disappointing to, to, to see him not even – he didn't look too aggressive offensively, yeah. uh, at least from my, my side of it. You know, I, I feel like this is one of those games, you know, we talk about playoffs in the stand third. But when you know you got this hot of a team coming in, you got to show your worth. Because that's what Dev, Devin Booker said. We heard all the, the pregame interviews Book talking about it's the guarding. for this, bro. If you're going to be the high-paid man, be the all-star, in a game like this, you got to show up. You got to be yeah. the one that's going to put them on your back, especially no D. Rose. Uh, Mitchell Robinson, unfortunately, again, with an injury there, so we got to have that extra help. R.J. Bear, I'm looking at you as well. He, he played okay. Uh, the poor guy was doing everything he could against Devin Booker. The, I, I, I yeah. feel like his defense was okay um, in that first half, but Devin Booker was just making shot after shot. The one shot he missed at the end of the half, he was wide open. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yes. I mean? So it's yeah. just like it just was that night for Devin Booker. Uh, but the the big key here is, you know, we didn't have D Rose. It showed, and the Suns are just hot. Fifteen in a row. Yeah. Not much we could have done. Bro, but Book was unstoppable tonight. There, unstoppable. There's nothing that they could have done to make things tough. I mean, what you want to get a little bit more physical for, bro? His his mid range was met was a masterpiece. He had RJ Killer. draped all over him. And like I said, when he, when he had this circled on his calendar, I, I, I hit up Chuck earlier today. I said, the, the way Devin Book and CP3 talking, it's going to be a long night. I, I said that to Chuck. Chuck Chuck laughed and was like, oh, boy. So, yeah, it's going to be a long night. So, tonight was a night where I felt like we really missed Rose and, and his ability to make sure. tough shots, especially in the mid-range, especially in the half court, because 
we we just couldn't get any flow to our to our offense. And I agree with you on on the Julius um, the Julius point. And again, I give him credit for for trying to get his guys involved, but I feel like he's still trying to figure out when to take over and when to be that that playmaker. We did need yeah. more uh, more aggression from him. We did need him to take over in that game because we just couldn't get get much going. Going into the game, I, I mean, I, I kind of already figured. What, what was going to happen. I mean, honestly, just watching every single Knicks game this season, uh, every single game last year, I, I kind of have a feel of what this team is. I know the excuse that you know, like, the guys been using is like, you know, they got to continue to gel together, continue to play the game together. But, I mean, we're almost 25% of the uh, way through the season. I mean, this team is what it is. They're a team that consistently depends on, you know, jump shooting. And as long as you do this, I think I said this last time I called in, but as long as you depend on that to be your go-to, it's going to be inconsistent. You know, guys are shooting right. 40% mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. from the three, you know, in the season, and that's considered good. That means every time you shoot 10 shots and four of them goes in, that's 40%. I mean, if you're yeah. going to depend on, like, you know, that all the time, I mean, it's, it's going to be tough to be consistent. So, with that being said, I think this team is going to be, like, you know, a 10-9 and nine team all year. You know, we're going to win some, we're going to lose some, and that's just what we're going to be middle of the road. Nah, bro, I'm disgusted with some of, with some of these people out, out here in their takes, man. I'm just going to read out some stats to you guys yeah. for the sake of looking at things from a long-term perspective. Mm-hmm. This, individual mm-hmm. player, this individual player in their age 24 season mm-hmm. with 38 minutes per game, uh, their third season, age 24, averaged 13 points on 39% field goal shooting, 28% from three. That was Jimmy Butler. Mm-hmm. You got DeMar DeRozan, his third season, age 22 season, 16 points per game on 42% field goal on 26% mm-hmm. from three. Not really the best efficiency, not really the most scoring output, but you got, like, we got to realize that like, he's going to get there. What we saw from RJ last year was only the tip of the iceberg, you guys. Like, this man's potential is, uh, it, it's, it's a, he has a very high ceiling. And even his floor, his floor is worth taking a gamble on. Like, at worst case scenario, in five years, R.J. Barry is going to be a solid 3 and D player for us. Mm-hmm. And best case scenario, I don't even know what the be- best case scenario is. The point is right. that you often see, like, like, you have a trend of these small wings. Like, well, not these small, like these small forwards, these wings that, like, kind of have, like, a rough start to their career, like, field goal percentage-wise, um, May, they, they're a little bit, like, belated on getting to that jump, but he's going to get there. Like, we saw him take a huge leap last year. We might not see it this year, but it's going to happen eventually. Okay, so mm-hmm. IQ played pretty good defense against CP3 tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty good shots, pretty good assists. Now, to point out, I've really bad what the offense is doing on the starting lineup. Emmanuel quickly has the same amount of assists as the leader of assists in the starting lineup, which is Julius Randle with four. He scored 16 points in 20 minutes, which is less minutes than all the starters, and only one starter has more points, which is Kemba Walker with 17. Mm-hmm. He shot six for nine, which is more made shots than all the starters in less shot attempts than three of the starters, mm-hmm. three of them being R.J. Barrett, Evan Fournier, and Kemba Walker. And he made the same amount of threes as Kemba Walker, which is the, mo- uh, which is the most made threes on the starting lineup. Mm-hmm. Third quarter, minutes five through four. 447, Chris Paul does a pick and roll into a layup. This is the only time Tibbs' defensive strategy works. And what happens? It We slack off. Randall, if you look, Randall's stuck in the corner. Randall's supposed to come into the paint and get in front of CP. Mm-hmm. He does not. Mm-hmm. RJ Barrett's actually set up to get in the passing lane, so a Randall could do that. What's supposed to happen is Randall's supposed to slide. Chaser's supposed to pick up on RJ's player. RJ's supposed to slide down to corner. Mm-hmm. That did not happen, so we're being lazy. Other side of the ball leads to a Julius Randle turnover. Coming down, fast break. 422, there's a lack of communication mm-hmm. between Kemba and Julius Randle. Kemba Walker All is right. posted up in front of uh, DeAndre Ayton. And that, and actually, he doesn't even post up at all. He's stuck between Ayton, and I forgot who was in the corner. Mm-hmm. But he's stuck between there, and Julius Randle is trying to tell him to go into the corner. But Julius Randle isn't in the passing lane between... Uh, Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton. So that leaves Kemba in a tough situation. So he tries to 
get in between and try to throw off Devin Booker, that does not work. Lack of communication again. What's supposed to happen, which Burks did in the fourth quarter, Mm -hmm. Kemba Walker's supposed to stay in front of Aiton and try to steal the ball so that way the ball is heading towards Kemba. Uh, But Julius Randle's lack of positioning doesn't cover the corner side or the middle slide so Kemba could slide to the corner and Julius Randle could pick up on Aiton to Mm -hmm. get rid of the height advantage. Mm -hmm. Lack of defensive assignments. This is clearly shown in this play. Mm -hmm. Kevin Devin Booker comes down. R.J. Barrett seems pretty confident. I think it was Cameron Johnson that was set up on the wing. Mm -hmm. R.J. Barrett comes down, sets up on Cameron Johnson. Kemba Walker is now lost because he doesn't know what the defensive assignment is and I'm going to blame this on Tibbs or the players for not doing research because for some reason we don't know who the hell we're defending why is rj barrett coming down to defending cameron johnson and kemba walker is also heading towards cameron johnson it's just a lack of effort and a lack of understanding with all the yeah, like i said man I, I i'm not i'm not talking about tonight man it, it yeah. just was one of those yes yes I, I and someone in the chat said yes you know there was a lot of things that you concerned with you know the lack of connectivity what Sam said, you know, a lot of a lot of blown plays on the defensive end, a lot of disconnectedness uh, uh, um, on defensively, offensively as well. You know that the, the lack of execution out of bounds, man. CK, I'll see you tomorrow, my dude. Knicks versus Mo Hawks. It is. Need now, it. I'm ready for the Knicks fans in here. I'm ready for the Hawks fans in here. I will be ready. <laughs> Win or lose, we here. Number one show for the fans. Yeah.